Space Adventures Ahoy with Dan Dare. What were you doing in summer 1989? Well, I was finishing up in junior school and getting ready to have everything knocked out of me when I went to big school. Probe, on the other hand, were developing a game called Crazy Jet Racer. I know this because the uh, June 1989 edition of CMVG says so. Last Christmas, Firebird Savage had Spectrum owners gasping at its righteously colourful, almost arcade quality, which didn't really look as if it's on the Spectrum at all. Probe are now producing the next game along the Savage lines, which uses similar but much improved programming routines to give an even greater illusion of a Spectrum freed from the bonds of a tribute clash and poopy sounds. Crazy Jet Racer is a pre-production title for the game which is yet to be signed up by any publisher. And the article goes on to describe a game that is, well, it's Dan Dare 3, because guess what? Virgin Mastertronic signed up the game and had Dan Dare shoehorned into it. Seriously, the preview here, it's, it's basically Dan Dare 3. The game was released in early 1990, and we start off... On the Spectrum 48K, yeah, why not? We'll do it on the 48K for once. And it doesn't really matter because it's a 48K only game. Yes, released in 1990, but there's no 128K enhancements at all. David Perry and Nick Bruti wrote the game. They are, of course, Probe. And we start the game and you are, well, now Dan Dare compared to the preview. You have a jetpack which needs charging up from the fuel thing we just walked past. And you have to defeat the Mekon thing at the end of each level in order to collect some fuel to escape the, uh, well, escape the game, win the game, basically. You need 50 pounds of fuel. None of this has changed apart from the fact there's a, now a Mekon thing you have to shoot there. And that computer screen at the bottom is also somewhere where you can buy new weapons. And you get points for shooting baddies, which you can spend. Smart bombs, extra life, bouncing bombs, top up your ammo. Yes, everything's finite in this game. Over to the CPC. No title music. I like the Spectrum, very colourful indeed. Lots of giant explosions, just refuelling my jets there. That's the jetpack. Baddies take several hits to destroy, although you can hold down your fire button and power up a bit more to destroy, to use less shots to destroy an enemy. C64, and all the 8-bit level layouts are the same. No soundtrack or anything on these 8-bit versions as you play it. Everything is effectively silent. C64, all, all these versions look very nice. I was going to say the C64 version looks nice, but they all look nice. Over to the Atari ST and we have an introduction sequence on the 16-bit versions and sampled music. However, if you're an Amiga owner who wants some one-upmanship on this, then actually what the ST version appears to be doing is playing back a sampled version of the Amiga music. It's identical, other than the fact it's more muffled and entirely in mono. Dandere 1 and Dandere 2, also by Virgin, many years before though but recently been re-released on budget when this game came out. Drags on a bit, doesn't it? Basically, you've been captured and you have to escape. That's it. When CMVG reviewed the 8-bit versions of this game, they weren't sure if an ST and Amiga version was going to be produced, but evidently it was. The levels on the 16-bits are larger than the 8-bits, although the main layout, central layout, seem to stay similar and it's just as well they are bigger we'll we'll see why 
ST and Amiga versions, ostensibly the same as you'd expect from a game from 1990. Although, and now you can see it's looking familiar here from the 8-bit versions. Although they have the usual differences in sound. And apologies, there is some kind of corruption going on behind my sprite on the Amiga, which shouldn't be there. I don't know why it is, but we will press on. Apparently on the uh, earlier levels, this um, train thing, the Mekon, whatever it is, is uh, a holographic projection. So on the Specky, we have destroyed the Mekon on the first level, and now we go to level two with the teleport he drops when you destroy him. And suddenly we're flying through space and we have to stay within the boxes or we lose energy. You get four lives and it's critical on this stage. You don't lose too much energy because obviously you're going to have to recharge when you get onto a later level. Although you can buy power-ups and extra lives, there's, you're only allowed to buy so much. So four lives is the most you can have. It's so wonderfully colourful on the specy. And indeed on CPC. But on these 8-bit versions, the levels are very, very small. Minute. They're tiny. Pick up the fuel, pick up the teleport. You can't destroy those gun things, just run away from them. Well, energy, not... There are power-ups scattered through the levels, which can be useful. Going between the levels on the C64 version. On the 8-bit versions, this section is, is easier than the 16-bits. We will get on to that. You will lose a little bit of energy, but it's not too bad. In order to select your weapon, you pull down the joystick and press fire. And you can see me using different... I'm using the standard plasma cannon at the moment. There are smart bombs as well, and there's various things you can select that you can buy or pick up when you pull down the joystick, including smart bombs, bouncing bombs, and invulnerability, and so on. And sometimes, like here, you have to activate a switch to get past a section. Incidentally, there are more power-ups available on the 16 bits than the 8 bits. There's homing missiles and a multi-way shooting thing as well. Mekon aside, the baddies in this game have no relation to Dan Dare at all. Because this is Crazy Jet Racer. With Dan Dare shooting into it, basically. ST version, I'm using the bouncing bombs. Come across that C64 version, you notice actually the ST version is a little bit jerky, as is the Amiga version. The level, uh, levels are, however, bigger. Not Tarkin 2 bigger. No, they're just the adequately large, as opposed to tiny tiny as they are on the 8 bits. Got an invulnerability thing activated at the moment, it's just worn off. And that's the smart bomb. It's activating that at the moment. If you run out of fuel for your jetpack, you basically have to walk back to the teleport and then get back to the stores in order to rejuvenate yourself. Because the only place you can get more weapons, other than randomly drop power-ups and more fuel for your jetpack, is the store level you start off on. So at the end of every level, you pretty much want to travel back to the store to get what you need. Don't always have to. It depends on how your supplies are looking, really. I'll be going between levels on the Amiga version, and look how insanely 
fast and hard this is. It's the same on the ST and Amiga. It's really hard compared to the 8-bit versions. Nice soundtrack, though, on this level at least. It gets the pace of it kind of going up. But you end up coming through the other end basically with no energy and as soon as you touch anything, you die and then you have to carry on. And it, that's rather annoying. And if you're wondering why I sound a bit subdued today, I do have hay fever. Don't worry, it's not catching. Unless it's the other thing. That homing missiles, you don't get those on the 8-bit versions. They're good for tunnels and areas where there's things you can't see off screen. Very different feel from Dan Dare 1 and Dan Dare 2. It's more of a straight out shoot 'em up, really. Okay, exploring a little bit, but not much, because these levels aren't really big. Homing missiles useful down here, because they will go up and uh, if there's anything you can't see off screen, there you go, there's, that's useful. And change it. Bouncing bombs are good for clearing out tunnels, but they can go off in random directions, so you need to be a little bit careful of that. And baddies with bouncing bombs may take more than one hit to kill. Indeed, with the plasma rifle, they will still take more than one hit to kill unless you hold down the fire button to power up. Views of this game were somewhat middle ranking. Scores in the region of the 70% for the 8-bit versions. Some of the magazines kindly didn't mention how short the game is. Yes, I completed the Amstrad version in 13 and a half minutes. 13 and a half. And I can tell you the 16-bit versions really aren't that far behind. And yes, I am using a cheat today, but I did complete the Amstrad version back in the day. I had it on disc. And with my rubbish gameplay skills, that's saying something. So now we're on level four, the final game level. There's the store and then four more levels after that. So five levels in total. We just shoot this baddie here that I don't know if that has any relation to Dan Dare. Perhaps someone can tell me. Giant Birdman, I don't know. And then there's the, the meek on the final incarnation. No extra challenge, just as easy to defeat him as it is on level one. We shoot him. Hopefully there's 10 kilos of fuel behind him there. And then we go back to the store and then select blast off and that's it. And as I've mentioned before, you can't shoot these things just to show you can't do that. I'm trying it and just basically run away and try not to get hit. Pull down, press fire, select store. And off you go. And if you're looking for a beverage containment system to keep your drinks hot or cold whilst playing your retro games and Chini Vision travel mugs are now available. Check them out, Chini Vision. Dot com. Okay, there's no multi-load, all the 8-bit versions load in at once. But you just feel there should just be a little bit more, especially when they've taken so much care with the graphics. It's almost like this is a prototype game that probe have done they've taken it to virgin and virgin gone yeah it's fine just stick dan dare in it that'll do 
not, uh, well, it needs another month of development, right? There's the terminal screen where you can buy things. Blast off option five. There we go. And the Astropod mentioned there is a direct reference to the original uh, preview I've got here of Crazy Jet Racer, where that's what you were supposed to be rescuing because you were supposed to be a Crazy Jet Racer and therefore you'd have a Vox and Astra space pod thing. Final level on the Amiga. It's more of a maze level. It is bigger. Still not big. And here's the Mekong. He's not even floating around. You expect him to be floating around. He just sits there, just firing. In the same way he did on level one. There's something about this game that just, like I say, it just suggests we've got this far and then no one's prepared to fund it any further. So it's just been put out as it is. Although, in the original Spectrum Outer and Commodore 64 reviews, they do say there were currently no plans for an ST and Amiga version. So goodness knows. Why do you see MVG said that kind of thing a lot? Right. Back to the store on the Amiga. Down we go to the terminal. And you can see the difference there between the options you get, but it's still blast off. That's it. High score. Do you get any kind of congratulations on this version? Oh, hang on, here we go. With any luck, I'll be back in time for tea. And that's it. Dare 3 on the Spectrum, Commodore 64, Amstrad, ST and Amiga. It has the whiff of a game that Probe have developed. They've taken to a publisher and gone, right, what can we do with this? Can you give us some money to develop this further? And the publisher, in this case Virgin Mastertronic, have gone, not really, just stick Dan Dare in there and a few Mekong graphics and then we'll stick it out. The game could have been something really special. Graphically, it's superbly polished. It's great on all of those 8-bit versions. The Spectrum version overcomes all the limitations of the system. C64 version looks lush. The Amstrad version is also really, really colourful. But the levels on the 8-bits are far, far too small. Unforgivably small, in fact. I guess that's the payoff for all those large, lush graphics. We're going to have tiny levels and a total lack of in-game music, even on the 64 where these, these things were common. ST and Amiga versions, they're bigger, I'll give them that. There's more to explore, but they're still not massive. And you know what? They don't really even play as well as the 8-bit versions. You're paying a lot more money for a slightly bigger game that doesn't play as well. What this game actually reeks of is a cash-in for the Dan Dare anniversary. Virgin Master Trank wanted to get it, get out another Dan Dare game and to do it cheaply, quickly and easily. And they took Crazy Jet Racer from Probe and just shoved it out. It's a shame because Crazy Jet Racer with a bit more development could have been something really special and it deserves more than what it eventually became, which is Dan Dare 3.